So let's get into these virtual drumline templates for Finale 2010. Uh, you'll see there's an indoor templates folder and an outdoor templates folder. And I'm just going to go into outdoor templates for the sake of this example. And uh, there's two files in there, template one and template two. I'm just going to open template one. And the only difference between those two templates is that in template one, the uh, battery staves are on the top. And in template two, the battery staves are on the bottom. Otherwise, these are basically exactly the same. Just because this score has snares, tenors, basses, cymbals, glock, xylophone, vibraphones, uh, that doesn't mean you need to use those instruments. You might need um, you might need a staff for tambourine. You might need a staff for break drums. Um, basically, if you don't need a snare, tenor, bass, cymbals, you might not even be writing for marching battery. Just go to your staff tool and remove them. Just select them and and say delete. Um, we're not going to get into that right now. You can basically add or delete any of the staves from the score and customize the layout uh, just using Finale's regular staff features. Uh, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're just going to sort of use this stock template for uh, the sake of example. Um, the, the purpose of this video is to basically point out the three main areas that you need to be familiar with. and. Uh, those areas are here in the staff tool by double clicking on uh, any staff we're going to go into the staff attributes window that's going to be the first area of importance um, second area of importance is the instrument list window which you can get to by just selecting your window menu and the third area of importance is in the MIDI audio menu under instrument setup using audio unit or VST instruments if you're on a PC, it'll say VST Instruments. And uh, this is where we're going to actually load the contact player. So those three areas are where we're really going to focus on in this video, um, just so you know your way around, because those are probably the most important uh, areas where you're going to be assigning instruments and altering playback settings and MIDI channels and those sorts of things. So for starters, uh, going back into our staff tool, double-clicking on a staff here brings forth the staff attributes window. If you're using an unpitched percussion instrument from Virtual Drumline, such as our snare line that we're currently editing, uh, you're going to want to make sure that this notation style is set to percussion. Um, there's a whole host of things that you can do within this window, uh, which we're not going to really talk about right now, but main thing I wanted to point out to you is this percussion notation style. Uh, anything that's set to a percussion notation style that means it's going to use a percussion layout. And you can see these percussion layouts by clicking this Select button. That brings forth the Percussion Layout Selection window. And uh, this is where we get a, a quick peek at the power that comes with the uh, Virtual Drumline templates uh, from Tapspace. In here, basically, you see every Virtual Drumline instrument that has an unpitched percussion map. So you'll see here that our snare line manual is set because we're that's that's what's assigned to our snare line staff. But if uh, you know if it was a concert bass drum staff, we could uh, assign it to this percussion layout. Um, and basically, scrolling down, you'll see that there is a whole long list of all the various instruments from within Virtual Drumline that you have to choose from. So these percussion layouts get very in depth, and they basically control the uh, the display on staff and what uh, what kind of note heads appear on the staff. So I'm just going to cancel out of here. Um, that's just an important area to know about. The other area uh, that I mentioned before is the instrument list window. And um, this is an area where you're going to basically set uh, your MIDI channels and your MIDI maps for each staff. So over here you'll see the column for staff name and all the uh, staff names that you see here correspond to the various staves that you see in the score. So snare, tenor, bass, cymbals, glock, xylophone, vibe one, two, three. Those are all basically just corresponding over here. Uh, a new feature within Finale 2010 is this percussion MIDI map column. And this is also an important area to understand because the percussion MIDI map that you have selected for any given staff 
needs to correspond to the percussion layout that you chose within the staff attributes window that we just talked about. So in here, you'll see all these various VDL percussion MIDI maps. These are here because we drug those XML files into place in the installation steps. Uh, these up here, those are just sort of the pre-configured finale MIDI maps, but anything that's appended with the VDL uh, prefix, these are all customized VDL MIDI maps that came with your template. And so here uh, I've got the VDL snare line category that have the various snare instruments from virtual drumline to choose from. So the snare line manual MIDI map is what I want to choose. And that basically will define the various note names, the note types that uh, will correlate to the percussion layout that we chose here from within the staff attributes window. So it's important that the, uh, the percussion layout that's chosen for a staff, like for example, let's set it to snare line auto right left, select, okay. That percussion layout that we just chose there, that needs to correspond to the percussion MIDI map that's chosen here. So since we just changed to snare line auto right left, this also needs to be set to snare line auto right left. Okay. In this instrument list window is the channel column, and this is where you which we're going to get into in just a minute. So basically my snare staff is set to MIDI channel 1, my tenor staff is set to MIDI channel 2, my rack 2 staff is set to MIDI channel 11. Um, so that's, that's important. These don't have to stay set to these MIDI channels. Uh, depending on the needs of your score, you can, you can alter these MIDI channels. But it's important to know what these MIDI channels are in relation to the MIDI channels that exist within Contact Player. We're going to go into Instrument Setup and select Audio Unit Instruments, or if you're on a PC, this will say VST Instruments. So in here, this basically allows you to select um, uh, an instrument plugin. And to load virtual drumline instruments, we're going to select Contact Player 2. So once you've loaded an instance of Contact Player 2, you'll see that this little pencil icon becomes active. And when you click that, it brings forth the Contact Player window. And in here, this is where you can actually access all the instruments from Virtual Drumline. So right now, it's just an empty player. There's nothing in here. And each one of these plugin instances allows you to load up to 16 instruments. So let's just start loading a few instruments just to kind of see how that works. I'm going to go into my Drumline Battery folder, into my snares. And I'm going to load the snare line auto right left because that's what we assigned as the percussion layout. Double clicking that, uh, that instrument name will just load it right over here into the rack. And you'll see now I have my snare line auto right left loaded. And here's another important thing. The MIDI channel is set to channel 1. Uh, you can change that MIDI channel if you, if you need to. Uh, just focus on port A from host and you've got from 1 to 16 as your MIDI channel selections. So as we load new instruments in, you'll see that they just sequentially load uh, MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2. Um, I know that I want my tenor line to be the manual tenor line. I'm just going to use the tenor line manual light. So double click and my tenor line manual light loads. You'll see that that's set to MIDI channel 2. Let's load in a bass line manual light, double click that and it will load my bass line which you see here is loaded into MIDI channel 3. Um, symbols, another way you can load these in, I'm just going to load a 20 inch symbol line for now. I can actually drag it over here if, if that floats your boat, you can do that. So that's contact player, the instrument list and the percussion layout selection area of staff attributes so that you can start co uh, coordinating all the various staves within your score and assigning your virtual drumline instruments accordingly.